Hey everybody, welcome back to Letterman Row. I am Austin Ward. You know him. That's Zach Bourne. That, it's Buck IQ. We're getting into the defense, and Zach, uh, a lot more encouraging signs. I think that you were probably waiting for as the Buckeyes rolled on Saturday at Michigan State, and that defense was um, that was clearly the best four quarter game of the season for those Buckeyes. Man, that was great to see. That was back to silver bullet defense, right? That's what we see. That's what we saw every week last year uh, in that defense. We knew that's what they were capable of, right? All year we've been waiting for them to click on all cylinders, and finally they were able to do that, making plays, running around, getting after the football. It was awesome to see. I know how much it means to you. I mean, that was a game that was really – it featured the linebackers. They played uh, – they were hard-hitting. They were aggressive. They made a ton of plays. Uh, it's remarkable how far that uni unit has come in two years under Al Washington, and they were doing it without Tuff Borland, who. Um, you know, we've, we've talked about him a number of times on this show, yep. uh, for whatever, you know, people might not think of his pure athleticism. He is the captain of that unit. He is a hard hitting tackle. He's fundamentally sound. And, but there were guys ready to step in. You saw Justin Hilliard and Dallas Gant who were going to break down in this buck IQ, but that unit as a whole, Pete Warner, Baron Browning, my goodness, are they playing well? you're 100% right, you know, and, it, it, you know, as a former linebacker, there's certain games in the Big Ten schedule where you know they're just linebacker games. They're just <laughs> made out for linebackers, right? You look across the board. Penn State, Wisconsin, Michigan State, and Michigan. Like, if you're an Ohio State linebacker, you know those games. It's time to, it's time to shine out, right? And so, leading up last week, we, you and I kind of knew Tough Borland wasn't going to be playing. You know, those rumors were out there. And so, it was interesting to see how that they were going to – line up without tough out there, especially him being a three-time captain, especially how the communication was going to be, right? Because we all know that Mike Linebacker is responsible for getting the back end and the front end on the same page. And, man, they didn't skip a beat. Justin Hilliard, Dallas Gant. You know, both of them came in, played really well. The linebackers were flying around. You know, I love tough. Thinks he brings so much to the defense. But, man, it, they did not skip a beat out there Saturday. And those guys that need to answer the call, they answered it. Yeah, Gant. He's such an interesting case because we've talked about, uh, you know, guys who've had to wait their turn in this program, and, and that's a tribute, you know, to the culture that guys aren't transferring and jumping at the first opportunity. And this is guy, he's a junior. He's he, Sometimes he barely even gets in the game still, um, but this is, a you know, the payoff. When Ohio State needed somebody to step, off, uh, step into the lineup, Dallas Gant was right there and ready to roll. They did. And, and playing linebacker is such a, a mental thing, right? You have to have confidence. You have to trust what you're doing. You have to trust that you know your responsibilities. There are so many things from a mental standpoint that you have to be great at to succeed at linebacker. Yeah, it's great to have the physical tools and, you know, uh, be as tall and, and fast as Pete Warner and Baron Browning and be able to run around and make plays like that. But there is such a big mental part of the game as playing the linebacker position. And Dallas can't step in, like you said. He's, a you know, an older guy kind of hasn't left the program has stayed in there played a lot on special teams but for him to come in there and and get his shot and not not almost put too much pressure on himself but trust what he can do mentally have confidence that hey this is my time to show out even though I've been waiting my turn right he went out there did everything he was supposed to do running around played free to you know let his uh physical and mental capabilities take over read and reacted you know was running around to the football that, that's what you want to see and for Dallas can to be able to do that especially wait in his turn yeah. man it, we'll see if the Big Ten changes their ways of of you know the minimum games with tough Borland not being able to play this week again against Michigan I'm sure you will see Dallas Gant out there a lot and especially the biggest <laughs> rivalry in all sports right Dallas Gant time to show up brother yeah let's well let's hope that we get the game on Saturday let's also I mean Ohio State would also do well if the Big Ten could ad ad adjust and adapt to those CDC guidelines because that's also a senior day opportunity for a three-time captain. But either way, Dallas Gant will be ready. He showed that on Saturday against Michigan State. Let's roll the tape. All right, Zach, we, we saw this early and often, Dallas Gant being out there. I mean, this is opening drive of the game, and, and he's out there in a big situation and steps up to the plate in a way that uh, Al Washington would have loved to see. 
He does, and I love this play, right? Sitting here playing middle linebacker, you obviously get flow. You get some pullers uh, from Michigan State, right, that they're showing with their Y and their guard. In Dallas Gant, man, playing in the middle right here, he, this is a phenomenal play. But, you know, like you said, very first drive, just to start the game. He's playing downhill. There's no false steps. He's coming down with a purpose. Hats and hands right there uh, on the, on the uh, pulling lineman, right? And this is just perfect, man. Gets in there, makes a play. This was him setting the tone the entire game. I'd never really watched this until you pointed out when we started doing Buckeye Qs a couple of years ago. But when I see all of these guys, all of these three silver bullets in sync here, watch it. I mean, the footwork, yep. it looks like a dance routine. No, no doubt. And, and we've talked about this, right? We haven't really gotten into it uh, so much this year because we've been breaking down, you know, more so individual players than the entire defense. But if you run that back, if people are watching this, right, and you want to see the linebackers playing in unison, you want to see the, the front seven really working together. They call this tandem backers, right? So you look at the backers, they are playing in tandem. They know right now when the ball comes to this side, Dallas Gantt knows that he's got to keep the ball on his right shoulder and Pete Warner's got to keep the ball on his left shoulder. Look at that. They both go in unison. It almost looks like dancers. Like you said, they're both playing downhill. Look, they're both uh, make contact a yard behind the line of scrimmage. They're both keeping the ball on the right – on the correct side of their shoulder they are funneling this in between them they are playing in tandem this is perfect linebacker play Tommy Togia is pretty good up front too but we can talk about him on a later date uh you know these these linebackers not every play is going to have to be a tackle for loss that's the way that I'll cue this up but this is also Dallas Gant to use your term this is reading reacting and making sure that you know it stays a short game this is something you're probably willing to give up no doubt. Look at look at the sticks, right? When you're a linebacker, you look at the sticks every single time you get defense look. It's second and 18 here, right? The ball's back in, in Michigan State's territory. It's a seven nothing game. Listen, you play off, you know what you know it's gonna pass. In this situation, you're probably looking at one of three things. Looking at a pass, looking at a draw, or you're looking at some kind of screen pass, right? And so from this standpoint, Dallas Kent drops back, knows that hey, I can't really give up that, you know, 15 yard play to in order for it to be third third and three at that standpoint. So I'm a play back. I'm gonna let them throw the check down. I'm gonna get in the quarterback's throwing lanes from, from uh, you know, that, that mid range area. And guess what? He checks it down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read, react, come down, make the play. It's a one yard gain. Everyone thinks, you know, Dallas can't get a good drop right here and gets back. You're like, oh, he's giving up so much. It's a one or two yard gain, right? You're reading, reacting. He sees it, comes downhill, plays fast. When he made this play, I was like, Dallas Gantt's got it. And here's another thing. Look at these two linebackers. If you run that back, look, they're playing in tandem again. This is absolutely perfect. They're funneling the running back. They're both coming down. Baron Browning, Dallas Gantt, look at this. Baron Browning knows I can't let him get to the outside. Dallas Gantt knows, hey, I got Baron Browning's inside. As soon as they come down on this running back, they funnel it in between them. There's no place for this running back to go. Look at this. Proper angle by Baron Browning. I got to get to his outside. Turn him back in. Dallas Gant. Okay, I got the inside. Baron's turning him back into me. Bam. I'm going to – Dallas Gant says, I'm going to take it on my right shoulder. Baron Browning taking it on his left. Left shoulder. Bam. Bring in the pain. There you go. Third down. I really didn't know when we picked this one that this was a play that had got you out of your seat on Saturday. But I'm glad we did because we're probably just going to be skipping right over this. Uh, we've had all five of Dallas Gant's tackles. He got one here on the quarterback sneak. Not a lot of uh, execution really necessary for this. We'll skip over it. Here's one with uh, yeah. another chance for you to really dive in and explain what goes on for a linebacker here, Zach. Like, you can look at this. This was maybe maybe a little bit of a, a mistake or uncomfortable. I, I don't know. You can evaluate it for me. But he gave up a play. He does wind up running down the tackle. Maybe looked a little lost in coverage. But, you know, that's going to happen too. This is. And if you see this, he does the right things, right? It's his play action. He's playing downhill. As soon as he sees this, as soon right there, he needs to flip his head, right? As soon as he sees pass, what's he need to do? See that run, see that wide receiver going back? See, he's too late. You see him look back and try and find it. He needs to be a little bit quicker with his eyes. And this is just, hey, I haven't played much defense in a live game, live bullets. You see right here, he's kind of a little bit lost in the sauce. He's got the right initial read. That is the most important thing. But as soon as he sees it's fake, hey, Dallas, turn your, turn your head, 
find that nearest receiver. You know you're probably playing off at number three. That inside receiver turns into number three, number five sitting down right there, right? Pete Warner's got to expand to the other side because he's playing off of two in this situation. Dallas Gain is just getting a little bit lost in the sauce, but he's going to get better at this. But still, hey, shows his athletic ability, gives up the pass play, runs it down, though, and is able to still get it on the tackle. Hey, it happens. Guess what? Turn around. It's, we're playing another down. Get everyone in the right position. Yeah, go out and make another play later on. He does here. This is another, you know, tandem opportunity for these linebackers. You could just see that it – you've talked about this too, that the guys that want the contact, Dallas Gain is clearly not intimidated by that. No, no doubt. There's only one thing that he can maybe do is may, maybe be a little bit stronger right there to not to not get so pushed back. But here's the thing. Pete Warner, guess what? He knows these guys inside, right? This is perfect tandem backer playing. If you run this back a little bit and then freeze it, if you run it back to about right – uh, if you run it back to about right there, I'm sorry, I lost my screen for a second right here. If you see it come down, right, it, there you go. These backers are playing. So Baron Brownie's got the outside. Dallas Gann is going to attack right in the middle. Pete Warner's, it's called the backside screen. If you pause it right here, you see it. Baron Browning's over the top. Dallas Gant's taking on. Like I said, he can be a little bit stronger, so he's not moving out so wide. And then Pete Warner's got his inside. This is perfect. The only thing, Pete gets juked a little bit, right? Dallas, Dallas isn't so much strong at the point of attack, but he spins out of it, is able to get off the block, and still get it on tackle. And, hey, it's only a three-yard gain. You know, it is what it is. The, you're got, nothing's going to be perfect. Like you said, you're not going to get a TFL on every single play. You're not, as a linebacker, you're not going to make every play at the line of scrimmage. These guys, though, are doing the right things. They're taking on blockers. They're not running around things. They are playing in tandem. And as a linebacking core, that's all you can ask for. Big game for those Silver Bullets. I know it warms your heart to see it. Another win for Ohio State staying undefeated. And the Silver Bullets were right in the middle of it, 52-12 over Michigan State. They're getting ready for the game. or any game on Saturday. We'll see what it is. Hopefully it's the rivalry. I know you want those guys to go get some gold pants and maybe a chance to stand over a quarterback on Saturday in the horseshoe. Uh, a long way to go. Appreciate Zach Boren breaking it down for us, as always, on Buck IQ For Zach, I'm Austin Ward. We will see you next time.